So thank you very much for joining us on the next episode of the Eye Photography Podcast. My name's Stephen and today I'm going to be joined by another of our fantastic Eye Photography community members. Today is the turn of James Palmer. James is a very, very accomplished landscape photographer and we wanted to kind of have a little bit of a chat and a sit down with James and just kind of find out his backstory, get a little bit of an idea as to uh, what his photography journey has been like up until now and also the things that he struggles with and the things that he's looking forward to in his photography. So we're going to jump into that interview straight away and you can kind of hear more about James. You can also find out a little bit more information about him. We'll put all of his relevant social media and website links in the description of wherever you're watching this video or this listening to this podcast. So let's get started. So welcome along, James, to uh, our episode of iPhotography podcast as well. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me, Stephen. Lovely. So, I mean, the one thing that we kind of brought you on and invited you on the podcast for is because we've noticed, obviously, you're a very, very strong, accomplished photographer. Um, I mean, we'll kind of come to the areas and the, the interests that you have specifically. But I think literally if you kind of go back kind of quite a few steps, it's, it's really interesting and, and nice to actually find out a bit of a backstory about everybody that we have mm-hmm. on the podcast, really. So kind of up until now, you know, kind of looking back on your career or your photography journey, you know, how have you got here? What What's kind of brought you to be a photographer? Yeah, good question. Um great one to start with really as you say um so back in the 80s I'm a child of, well I was born in the 70s but I was you know a child in the 80s and um I remember I inherited my auntie's little Kodak do you remember those little sort of flat like box yeah. Kodak cameras that had the they had a little they had the sort of the canister thing that you put inside with the two yeah the, um I mean, one, yeah. I, yeah I think it's like a 30 like a 26 millimeter or something like that. I can't remember it was a really weird format anyway but uh, <laughs> I had one of those and it, I remember the other thing I remember about it, it had the single shot flashes but you could get four four um four things on it so you you put it on the top and when you wound it it would spin it round and then when you took the picture it would flash and that would be that particular flash gone it was brilliant it was it oh was, <laughs> it was yeah, like a they sound um, kind of quite you get these little kind of quirky cameras that do capture people's yeah. attention and yet yeah, brings you into the, yeah. the art really but so that was like back yeah. in the what early 80s we're talking probably mid 80s something like that yeah so it was um yeah really interesting so i got lots and lots of photographs of thumbs and fingers and <laughs> uh and the floor and you know things <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well that was probably my first exper- experience with a with a camera and uh and then um so, uh, and i sort of explained to my parents that i was quite into it and so my, my dad was into photo- photographic thing, things as well he wasn't very good but he used to you know he used to have a camera and so on and so they got me probably a russian dslr not a dslr slr a russian slr type sort of uh, you know camera with a horrible lens probably a 35 millimeter lens something like that um just all rounder sort of thing and it was uh, you know it was good fun you know taking photographs and stuff and it got to the point where my parents banned me from getting everything printed because i was taking so many photos that uh, yeah so i had to go get everything developed to negative and then i could go to the negatives and work out which ones i actually wanted to get printed to save some money <laughs> but i'd take photographs of absolutely everything with this thing and it it did pretty well um and then like normal film went out the window it was getting harder and harder to source the film harder and harder to get it developed and uh, and everything else and I noticed that the quality of it wasn't all that great really compared to what other people were producing and so forth and so um but digital was on it uh, sort of unachievable really um certainly in terms of getting a camera in those days that would take good photos was you're talking thousands and thousands of pounds you know and even that was just like 10 megapixel sensors and things like that and um so i kind of i bought myself a little compact that i would take for take with me for taking little snaps and what have you then the, obviously the mobile phone camera started to improve and so on and so I sort of just got by with a compact and not really always sort of thought well that's something I'd like to do but not something that I ever managed to do much about um but then back in 2019 um work asked me to go to South Africa um for a um for a conference to uh, to speak at a conference and that sort of thing and I thought well I can't really go to South Africa somewhere like that 
uh, and not have a decent camera. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I rolled my birthdays and Christmases into one and my wife <laughs> bought me a, a nice, decent decent DSLR. Um, and I managed to pick up a cheap zoom lens as well, um, secondhand. And um, yeah, so and then and then, so then I was sort of thinking, well, I need to learn how to use this thing. And actually, um, that's where iPhotography came in because you were doing a deal on Groupon at the time. So it was uh, <laughs> it was a cheap voucher. Um, and, I, and I thought, well, you can't, you can't, you can't lose too much if it's really bad. And it turned out to be really good. No, um, it's, so it, it's very true. It's as you say, you can get all this equipment and there's, you know, you can read through manuals, et cetera. But you, mm. you know, it's learning about the, the art and the craft of photography on top yeah. of it is something, yeah, user manuals will, will never teach. But it's yeah. so, so, so in some respect, I mean, as much as you've had, uh, you know, an interest in photography for pretty much most of your life, you know, you've really kind of started to get the, the kit that you're using now um, in the past kind of year or two, really, is it? So you're, you're yeah. Kind of, yeah. I mean, what are you actually shooting with now? I know we always say that, you know, cameras don't make a photographer per se, but sometimes it's quite interesting just to know what, what kit and what lenses you're, you're running with. So what, what, what's in your bag now? Um, so I'm using the body I'm using. It's still the Sony a6000. Um, even a couple of years ago, it was still it was three, four years old, but it was still after doing some research, everyone was saying for bang for buck. It's by far the best camera body you can get, um, which is quite incredible, really, when you think how quickly digital technology moves on that a four, a four or five year old camera could still be yeah. um, a good choice. Um, and I'd probably say that for some people start, for starting out, it's probably still a decent um, body to buy. It's dirt cheap now and um you can get lots of lots of uh, lenses and so on so i've got the a6000 which i absolutely love nice and small and uh, and portable and light um and most of the time i have got a sigma 16 millimeter lens on the uh, on on the front of it um yeah it's quite wide angle but it sort of lends itself really well to um obviously landscape photography but even like going out and about it's great the um it's got a really short um minimum focus distance which means you can get in really close to stuff if you really need to um and um yeah so that's my sort of that's my go-to setup um that, i have I mean, it's it's sorry to jump in and say i've got yeah. the exact same setup as you uh I've, yeah. got, I've got that camera i've got that lens and that's the other thing that i've noticed about it is that it's minimum focus distance is crazy you know for a wide yeah. lens I've, I've got a 50 mil and i've got a I think it's a 55 to 210 that I bought recently. I haven't even had a chance to play with it. Um, but that's the one that's impressed me the most um, is that, you know, it's, I should say, like a good go to <laughs> lens because mm -hmm. it, it covers all manners of sins, but it does allow you that ability to get kind of nice and close in, really. But have you, you yeah. used it quite a lot? Is that your, I should say, is it your prime, primary lens? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So that's the one I've got on there most of the time. So when I'm out and about, it's the one, if I'm going out, it's the one I'll throw onto the front of the camera for almost everything. Um, and then it's a pit stop in order to change it for if I decide that there's something else that I want to photograph. But it's the one that I put on there usually when I'm going out. Sometimes I'll, I've got a 70 to 350 lens, which I, if I decide I'm going out for um, doing some wildlife or something like that, then I'll put that on. But, you, yeah. but other than that, it's always the first choice. Yeah, good yeah. choice as well. Definitely, I've, yeah, I found it to be a, a, a superb lens for as wide as it mm. is and it, as fast as it is. It's very, very impressive indeed. But yeah, um, I mean, with you saying about kind of going out and, and you know, kind of photographing wildlife, and I know obviously from the images that I've seen in the gallery, you're a very, very strong landscape photographer, which I appreciate. Obviously, over the past twelve months, um, as for many people, not just ourselves, that um, it's probably been really, really hard to get outdoors and photograph the things that you love, but. With just as we were saying before we came on air, you know, with the, the lights coming at the end of the tunnel now, looking forward to 2021 and, and onwards, do you have any photography goals that you're looking to kind of achieve for the rest <laughs> of the year or things that you really want to do that you've just been held back from doing over the past 12 months? <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I get a huge amount of pleasure, endorphins, definitely, from just going out with my camera and walking. It's a good motivation to get out and walk. Yeah. Um, and I found that really difficult the last sort of three months, four months or so, um, not being able to just drive my car out and find somewhere. I'm very lucky to live um, very, you know, half an hour's drive, less than half an hour's drive from great landscape. And um, so it's nice just to be able to go out with the camera and so on. So that, I definitely want to be able to do that. Um, I want to explore my immediate area a lot more, um, take some, a lot more sort of sunrise, sunset photographs. But I think the one thing that um, I really want to work on is um, sort of astrophotography and 
that sort of thing. I'm quite fortunate that um, Exmoor is only about 90 minutes away from, well, it's less, it's less than that. It's probably more like an hour away drive from where I live. Um, Exmoor is a designated dark skies reserve, which means that they're not allowed to put certain lights on, build certain lights and all that sort of thing, which means that um, for, the, for the sky nighttime photography, it's uh, absolutely fantastic. You've got a few issues with, with uh, Minehead and Taunton and places like that causing a bit of light on the horizon, but in, compared to a lot of parts of the UK, it's great. Um, so I really want to get out there at nighttime, take some shots of the Milky Way, um, particularly um, um, with reflections there's some nice lakes and so on get some nice reflections and things like that i think you could get some really awesome photos at night time and uh, maybe improve my light painting skills as well so that i uh, get some really yeah. cool astro landscapes that that's really um, nice because we don't see much of it in the eye photography gallery i think it is quite a, a specialized niche that uh, takes mm -hmm. a lot of consideration a lot of time you know so they can the right kit and obviously being in the right locations it's not a case that you can just Point your camera up to the sky at night time and, and expect something good uh, as you say over long exposures a lot of like pollution can make it you know that bit trickier really so having those kind of goals is is great because i know obviously from what we've seen of you in the gallery you know landscape seems to be a big part of your interest but uh, maybe kind of looking maybe back over the past 12 months i'm also noticing um you know a variation in your work there's some portraits mm -hmm. some abstract work etc but you know, outside of, of landscapes and things, you know, associated like, um, I should say, like sunrises and astro, is there any other little kind of um, genres within photography that you really, really enjoy as much as landscapes? Um, I think landscapes is the thing I like, like doing the most. Um, um, I love looking at landscapes and then obviously astro, generally, I really enjoy that as well. I enjoy the challenge of, of that. I enjoy... I think the thing I like, and particularly about astro, I've been playing a little around around with doing sort of deep sky astro as well, which is a real, real challenge. Um, taking pictures of nebulas and um, and that sort of thing, and that's a real, real challenge. Um, but I think for, for the, the thing that's incredible about that is that you can sit there with your camera and you can take photographs of things that you can't see with your eye um, because they're too faint in the sky. Um, but with the power of the camera, you can, and the, the light gathering capabilities of the camera, you, the, things can come to life. And sometimes you can't even see them on the viewfinder, even after you've taken the photo. Um, you've got to get it onto the computer and um, stretch out the data so that you can actually see what's there. And um, I'm quite a technical guy. I'm a scientist, computer guy. And um, for me, that sort of whole process is really um, rewarding, just being able mm -hmm. to sit there and pull something almost out of nothing um so yeah definitely I, I think i that's certainly something there's lots of areas i'd like to improve i'd really like to improve my portrait portrait photography i'd like to improve my um wildlife photography quite a bit and uh, that's more a patience thing i don't like sitting in the same place for ages and ages and ages you know I, I'm, I'm fully with you it's this is why when we when we created um for those that are listening that, that are not aware that i photography does have a, a lovely portrait and a lovely i um a wildlife course as well but it was something that i didn't get heavily involved in because i just knew my strengths and i knew my weaknesses um, yeah. one of my big weaknesses um was well i say within wildlife it was definitely patience um and i think i was this is partly why I'm also a big lover of astrophotography, but I think I enjoy more the viewing of it, the viewing of everybody's mm -hmm. final images, because I, again, do not have the patience for, you know, sitting down for maybe a good kind of five, 10 minutes, taking one exposure and then it being wrong. I, I much more kind of uh, like to get instant results. So I find that's yeah. quite useful with portraits and that's that's what I'm used to. Um, so yeah, hats off to anybody that, that has that kind of determination and that passion to to follow you know the i say that the harder the more um the more patience that you need like in astro and, and in wildlife as well that's absolutely amazing but so you but mm. there's, there's still areas that you're keen on advancing in though anyway yeah they? yeah absolutely I'd, I mean, I'd like to have a portfolio of certain of those sorts of images there that uh you know things that i can sort of say i'm happy with um and i think another area so one of the one of the in normal times, my job takes me uh, abroad quite frequently. Um, I get to visit interesting places. So I'd like to build up a bit of a portfolio of some travel photos. Um, um, I quite like sort of photo photographing interesting architecture, particularly older architecture, um, cathedrals and things like that. Um, it's nice so building up. 
sorry it's, it's, it's okay nice that you don't hold yourself to one particular genre and just stay there i know some photographers do and and they're quite comfortable with that but is it just that willingness to to be diverse or just that urge to kind of create something all the time that that's kind of keeping you going or you just you just literally want to be taking photographs wherever you are is, is that the case for you do you feel yeah, I, I just enjoy. I enjoy the endorphins of of yeah. taking a picture and actually seeing it come together and put in editing and seeing it look nice, and then people obviously responding to that and saying that they agree it's a nice photo and that sort of thing. It's it's that that's all really nice. Um, I also think as well, um, I'm quite new to the photo photography sort of world and that sort of thing. And yes, I love taking photos of landscapes, and I think that's an area that I do well at um, but who knows I might be better at something else than, than or as good at something else and if I don't try things out then uh, and learn the skills then I'll never know that yeah yeah it, it's very humbling to hear because yeah some people do they they, they find a, an area that they like and they continue to pursue it and they become really good at it and that's that's brilliant that's something you know we can we can always mm -hmm. encourage which is say but exploration of other areas of other worlds you know you may surprise yourself you know i mm -hmm. may i if i if i actually maybe kind of put in some dedication and some time to wildlife photography i may find i really enjoy it and i don't think you know it's actually as uh, as time demanding as it possibly may be but yeah so if exactly. anyone's <laughs> anyone's listening you know if you if you're new to this as james is saying give it give it a try give everything a try really because you know we'll, we'll all have ups and downs on successes and failures over images and regardless of how long you've been a photographer whether it's a couple of years or a couple of decades I, i'm sure everybody kind of suffers in you know confidence and motivation and especially again you were saying over the past 12 months it's been really hard, but I mean, do you find yourself as, you know, in your photography that you've had creative blocks or, you know, motivational blocks and, you know, have you, how have you managed to deal with them if you, if you have had any? Um, very much so. Um, the last 12 months particularly has, well, has been a challenge. I, yeah, I've learned a lot when I've been able to get out, I've learned a lot and done a lot of things, but um, being stuck at home, um has been a real challenge particularly the last sort of three months i don't know why what it is about the last three months maybe it's the weather um, <laughs> and, uh, I, I would fully agree it's been yeah you know, obviously you know in the uk and i know other people would suffer it uh you know at different places around the world but for this lockdown over the winter it's been very hard because the weather has been appalling and then you're kind of being told to stay at home all the time and yeah mm -hmm. it's very hard to live out what you you normally love doing so i, I fully yeah. understand really but but how yeah how is that kind of manifested for you you know what have you just kind of found the fact you don't want to pick up the camera yeah or just lacking in ideas lacking in motivations um so i love the challenges that are set the weekend challenges but also the the monthly challenges for photography plus you know that they're, they're um they're a real sort of a good way of sort of experimenting in other areas and often um and you know some, I've been enjoying doing those but then you know maybe there was a couple of months ago where I set up something spent hours setting something up took a sway the photographs and then realized that the whole lot was just went in the bin because it was rubbish and you know and I think that's partly because I'm getting more picky about what I find is acceptable because I'm, as I'm improving and that sort of thing um, yeah, so I think I think that's, it's a real it's a, it's a really difficult one. I, you know, I've, there's been quite a lot of times where I've just been thinking, you know what, I know, I'm not even going to bother going. When I have been able to go out, say with a dog or whatever, I'm not even going to bother taking my camera. And then you sort of get around the corner, and the sun's just rising through the trees, and you think, oh, why did I not take my camera? <laughs> and you know, and you've just got your mobile phone, and you take a couple of snaps, and it's, it's all great. But it's not, you know, it's not. And then you sort of and you get yourself into a real spiral downwards. Yeah. And I think. And I was, I think I was saying earlier as well that, you know, I find that there's a challenge that sometimes the challenge of doing different new things is actually doesn't, isn't as pleasurable as doing things that you're used to as well. You know, um, that sort of being able to click through the camera settings and do stuff that you, you know, just get nice images and so on is really, really rewarding. Whereas sort of for me doing like studio type sort of photography where I've got to set everything up, where I've got to get the quick kit ready and those, those challenges that's not necessarily as pleasing unless I get a good result. Yeah. Um, but I think one of the things that I've really um, found has been really encouraging is actually to talk to other photographers um, about my photos, about their photos. Um, so we've had a few um, sort of from the Photography Plus community, we've had a few sort of get togethers on Zoom where we've just, where someone's chatted about their photos and we've sort of 
fed back and so on and just that sort of supportive community that's that's growing there um, has been um, really helpful for me in terms of my motivation it's been great to talk about my photos and hear people's feedback um, getting some photos up into the gallery for eye photography has been great to get feedback there um, and it's you know and that sort of that, that's really helped and then you and then the Facebook group's been great for chatting about ideas and having a bit of banter around it and sort of seeing what other photographers are doing you know people like Bev and Steve and you know people who are really creative and have got you know coming up with some really good stuff and you sort of look at their photos and you think actually do you know what I could do that I could make something like that so I'm going to really challenge myself I'm going to set aside a few hours on Saturday and I'm going to go and do that um, That's and so yeah That's yeah really nice to hear that it's it's a motivational place and I, I'm not I'm trying to avoid making this as to like a big advert for eye photography plus. no it's a... <laughs> by, by all means, please check it out if you're listening like, <laughs> you know, it's at .com forward slash plus. we'll put all the links in the description but, but I think I think either way you you've hit the nail on the head because we've mentioned this a lot um you know in eye photography that being part of a community whether it's ours or somebody else's um yeah being part of a like-minded photo community um of people that are all going through the same struggles you know they're all maybe yeah. kind of a bit similar you know some maybe some some of slightly different skill levels but relatively similar um you, you can share your experiences and you can share your successes and failures but knowing that other people will be learning from it and other people will be going through it i think it is mm -hmm. quite humbling because even myself i mean though i've been doing photography for a number of years um, there's loads of things that I see from our other members that I get inspired by, I get motivated by, and I get jealous by, but I, I use that jealousy as like a, an inspiration of thinking, like you said, I can do that, or I want to have a mm -hmm. go, and I, I can try and do that myself as well. So it's it's so nice that you've just got a positive spin and you you see things, um, you know, as a, as a target in a way, as rather than a, a hurdle. I think that's kind of the, mm -hmm. the, the nicest things really, but one of, one of the last questions that we kind of like to ask on a lot of our interviews, it's I call it the um, the time travel question, the time machine question, that if you could basically kind of take all the experience and knowledge that you've got now and go back to what the mid 80s when you were walking around with that, that Kodak camera, if you could give yourself like one piece of advice as either what to come or, you know, what you should look out for as a photographer, what what kind of singular bit of nugget you know a golden nugget could you kind of pass your younger self to make things easier or even more enjoyable that's a really good question um it's a really hard one to answer i think um i think i'd probably just remind myself yeah you know, just say to myself you know what just go and enjoy it yeah um um it's and like i did i think with that camera it was just a case of fingers and thumbs in the viewfinder you know <laughs> <laughs> but you're, you're so true it's you know we all um, into this art for a reason and most of the time it's mm. like you said a couple of times that chasing those endorphins you know it's that pleasurable experience and not yeah. getting caught up in the the not there's not a competitive side to photography but some people kind of see it as a competitive thing as well but you're saying just enjoy it you know and do it for yourself really aren't you yeah and I think more. I think more sort of generally. Obviously, not so much with the with the Kodak camera or you know with with film cameras and so on, but certainly with 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 digital and so on. You know, so I think if I was sending to, if I was sending talking to my eighty eighty self and sort of saying, you know, when you actually finally get yourself a digital camera and you start working with it, you know, um, images don't cost you anything, um, apart from maybe one release of the shutter, which you know, it's not you know, it's not that. So you know. I think that's something that I something that I really struggled with at the start was I just take one shot or take two shots or whatever you know and then I come back and I think oh I wish I'd done that or I wish I'd done that and so on the images don't cost anything so go you know you go and stand in different places different angles and so on and try different settings and take 100 photos and throw 99 of them away fine that's absolutely <laughs> that's not a problem um but at least you're going to get one that you're really pleased with rather than taking two images and realizing they're both rubbish um you know, and I think that's something that I'm learning now is I can, yeah, I can, I can go out on a, I can go out on a walk and I can take 800 images and maybe keep 10 of them. Um, but that's not really cost me anything um, in that sense, maybe a bit of time processing which ones or deciding which ones I like and which ones I don't like. Whereas if I'd gone on a walk and only and taken only those a few images and had to throw those away because they're all rubbish, there'd be nothing to show for it. And I think that's something that, um, that we, I think, sometimes struggle to remember with um, like digital is that actually it doesn't cost anything to take photos. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you're very right. I know 
And I've noticed that a lot of the times from people that have transitioned from film to digital that they um, initially are very, very kind of cautious about taking loads of pictures because they've, they've come from that background where you've maybe got a, a roll of, you know, Kodachrome and you're only kind of shooting 36 exposures and that's it. So you, you're very, very mm -hmm. particular about what you shoot. So getting out of that mindset and actually getting into the case of, right, just take the picture, take the picture. As you say, it's, it's, it's not going to cost you anything. And at least you've got the opportunity to look back on it later. And maybe it is then an image that you use as part of a composite or you kind of put a few together or something or other as well, or mm -hmm. at least it, it teaches you something further down the line of that angle didn't work or this angle as well. So yeah, I'm fully behind you to say, just, you know, go say trigger happy within reason. <laughs> Make sure you have <laughs> tons of work afterwards to then start deleting images or cycling through them. But yeah, I, that, that's lovely. That's really lovely to hear. But so before we uh, wrap up, James, the one thing I wanted to make sure that everybody can kind of find out from you is, um, you know, what your websites are, your social media handles, so people can obviously actually have a look at your photography as well, because it's great listening to it on a podcast. And obviously, if people are watching this on uh, YouTube as well, we'll put a few images of James's throughout this video. Um, but what, what's your website? Where can people find out more about you? Yeah, definitely the best place to go to is my website, which is jpcreative.uk. Um and that will eventually have link back to my Facebook. I haven't, I've just realized I haven't actually got that on there yet, but uh, I've also got a Facebook page for my photography, which is James Palmer Creative. Um, so uh, yeah, those are the best places. Excellent. We'll make sure we kind of put them out so people can go and have a look. If you're not an iPhotography member, you can actually have a look at James's website anyway. Um, but yeah, it's it's been brilliant, James. It's been really, really kind of like <laughs> humbling and quite insightful to kind of find out your your approach to photography and obviously kind of what you've got kind of looking forward to as well. So I just want to say thank you very much for for joining us uh, today. And uh, and hopefully, I'm sure we can do this again as well. And we'd probably do more of these, couldn't we? Yeah, it's been really fun. It's been been really nice to catch up and so on as well so that's uh, yeah it's been good thank you thanks for having me oh you're very very welcome and again thank you for anybody that's been listening if you're listening to uh this is the first time you've listened to an eye photography podcast and check out all the other episodes and we've got more to come if you're kind of watching us on youtube then we'd love you to subscribe so you can watch more of them as well so from me and james we just want to say thank <laughs> you very much again and uh yeah we'll catch you in the future so bye-bye for now bye